Hello and welcome to a series of video tutorials from Information Security and Business Continuity Academy. My name is Dejan Kosutic and in this tutorial I'll explain what is ISO 27001 and uh, how this uh, information security standard uh, can help your company. So there are many myths about uh, ISO 27001 ranging from uh, it's only a bunch of documents or it requires a huge investment uh, in technology all the way to uh, we'll implement it in 60 days or we'll give it to our uh, IT guy and he'll uh, handle it uh, quickly. Well, all this is wrong. And uh, these kinds of uh, myths are discouraging a lot of companies from implementing a standard that could actually help them be more competitive and uh, eventually decrease their costs. So in this tutorial, uh, I'll explain the basics of information protection and how to use ISO 27001 as a framework for uh, managing uh, such a process. So let me start uh, with the explanation of the uh, purpose of uh, this standard. So the purpose is the preservation of uh, confidentiality, integrity and uh, availability of the information. So confidentiality basically means that only authorized persons can access uh, certain information. And integrity uh, means that only authorized persons can change or edit the information in a specified way. So this means that uh, the information is not going to be changed uh, by an uh, unauthorized person or in some way that is not allowed. And uh, availability means that information has to be available to all the persons who need them in the specified uh, time. Or let me explain it in a, in a simple uh, example. So let's say I go to the bank and want to open a savings account with uh, $10,000. So first of all, I don't want anyone else to know about this uh, $10,000. So only the bank and the financial authority will be able to know this information. So this is confidentiality. Next, I want this $10,000 to remain $10,000 plus the interest. So when I come back uh, after, let's say, one year to raise my money, I want it to be $10,000 plus the interest. I don't want it to be, let's say, $1,000 because someone was uh, messing around with my account. So this is integrity. And also, when I come to the bank to take my money, I don't want you know, the, the bank to tell me, we are sorry, you know, our system is down, so we can't do anything about it. So I want this information to be available so that I can get my money. Okay, now, how can we protect the confidentiality, integrity, and uh, uh, availability? So let me use my favorite example. So let's say you leave your laptop frequently in your car. So chances are, sooner or later, this will happen. I mean, it will get stolen. So what can you do to decrease the risk uh, to your information? So you have to apply some controls or safeguards. So first of all, you can write a procedure which defines that you cannot leave the laptop in your car. Also, you can protect your laptop with a password. So if it gets stolen, that it will be more difficult for someone to access your information. Also, you can encrypt your disk. So this is even higher level of uh, protection of your uh, information. But also, you can ask your employees to sign a statement where this employee obliges to pay all the damage that can occur if such an incident uh, uh, happens. But also, you have to train and you have to make your employees aware that there are such risks if they leave uh, their laptop in a car. Because it's easy, you know, to, to write a procedure, but very often you need to explain to your employees what is the best practice and what they have to really observe. So what can we conclude from this uh, laptop example? The controls are never only uh, IT related. They always have to include some other types of uh, controls like uh, organizational, like the procedure or policy, the human resources management, uh, also physical security, legal protection and so on. Also, information security can never be based only on one control. It has to be a set of uh, combined controls because only all these controls together can provide a uh, acceptable level of uh, security. Now, imagine you have a company with, let's say, uh, 100 laptops and various servers and a complex network, a uh, lot of sensitive information in uh, paper media, in digital media, uh, many contractors and so on. So if you thought that protecting a single laptop was easy, probably managing the security of all these assets together is quite a challenge. And for all this, you need a system. And ISO 27001 describes the information security management system, or often called ISMS. So how do you set up an ISMS? 
First, you need to find out what can go wrong with your information, and that is uh, which threats can endanger the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of uh, each and every information in your company. And this is done through a process called a risk assessment. Okay, and once you know where the risks are, you need to select appropriate controls or safeguards for each risk you find unacceptable. And the uh, ISO 27001 offers 133 controls uh, in its uh, Annex A. And where ISO 27001 is especially good is that it enables you to do this process in a systematic way so that you wouldn't forget anything that is important. So to conclude, this standard enables you to take into account all the information in various forms and all the related risks and gives you a path to resolve each potential problem and keep your information safe. And probably because it is uh, so comprehensive, it has become the leading international standard for information security management. And this is it. To learn more about ISO 27001, I would suggest you take a look at our other video tutorials and webinars, uh, which explain how to perform every step in ISO 27001 implementation and uh, how to write uh, each document uh, for this purpose. Hope this was helpful and thanks for watching.